Um, all right, um, our next speaker, oh, actually first a word, um, our second and third speaker spots um, were originally set to be filled uh, by a cool educator slash skateboard infrastructure builder, um, followed by, by a multi-talented rapper and lyricist. Um, unfortunately, they have canceled, so their presentations will have to wait for a future pachaka cha. Please stay tuned. In their stead, we are juggling uh, our speaker list, and we will be kicking off, um, and our speaker who was supposed to be kicking off Act Two will be our second speaker tonight. Um, she is an avid volunteer and community builder in this living city. She is passionate and, about using social enterprise to raise awareness and help Calgarians see themselves as a part of our city's story. Please welcome Alice Lamb. <laughs> I was more nervous about landing that high five than making this presentation, so I'm glad that I can check that off the list. Um, okay, I guess here we go. So, when I think about a living city, I really think about how we are all able to build it with our stories and our experiences um, and our family's history. And for a long time, I really didn't know how I, what my place was in this big old city of ours. And so I'll share kind of how I came to figure out who I was. Um, let's go back in time. Larissa and I both had cute childhood uh, pictures. But if you look at this picture, I look happy, but I was really lonely. Like for a long time, um, growing up with immigrant parents who were impoverished, living in a basement, like I really didn't know how I fit in in the city's story. And so as soon as I could, I moved away from Calgary. I ended up in Edmonton for my bachelor's, moved to France for my master's, and then the big dream, I moved to New York City and got to live, you know, how I saw people on TV living and thought that that was where I would be for the rest of my life. But something was really missing there. And I still didn't know who I was or what I was meant to do in this world. I struggled through and saw so much inequity in New York, and I knew that we had the same issues in Calgary as well. And then the 2013 flood happened and everybody was volunteering and I thought, I want that's the city I want to be a part of. And so when I moved back to Calgary in 2014, I really made it my mission to learn about our city and I started volunteering, doing little things like homework club at the library, um, translating documents for Chinese seniors in Chinatown, and even doing some governance stuff like joining the board of the Calgary Immigrant Women's Association. And really, through this process, it really inspired me, but frustrated me at the same time. I learned a lot of skills, I met a lot of people, but I couldn't believe how many systemic problems there were still in the city that I encountered as a child, that my parents encountered trying to make it through our city, you know, in a sustainable way. And I felt alone, like I still didn't know how I was gonna solve these problems all by myself. There was an existential crisis to it, you know, the world's on fire, we're freaking out, how are we gonna solve these problems? It's something that is so common to all of us in the city as we figure out how to navigate our lives here. And so eventually I went out and I tried to find people who also wanted to volunteer and wanted to try something to make a change. And that I wanted to make Tinder for volunteering called Volley. <laughs> and at first I got a lot of no's, like people were not interested. They're like, I have better things to do, no thank you. And I was like, maybe they're right. But eventually through this incredible city, I went to a meetup called Civic Tech and was able to meet a group of programmers who I owe my life to because they changed my life and they built Volley and um, just really saw the need for something to connect people to our community in a different way. And that first yes got me to start saying yes to other people as well. And so something that I'd always wanted to do was to create kind of collision points for communities, especially in a neighborhood like Crescent Heights. And we created our first low cost flea market for people just to meet. And we were able to have immigrant seniors sell their crafts there. It was amazing. And then there was an empty storefront on Center Street. And I said, you know, what would it be like if we opened the store for people to share the space? rather than having one owner and we created Tiger's Dead pop-up market where vendors could come and go and everybody got to try to figure out if their side hustle could turn into a full-time thing. 
eventually we started the Calgary Community Fridge, which we sadly had to close this year, but we're pivoting. And we started Good Neighbor, which is Calgary's first pay what you want thrift store aimed at providing Calgarians with a dignified shopping experience regardless of their ability to pay. Slowly and surely we were able to build a team of people where I didn't have to be alone anymore. So, a little bit about Good Neighbor and how it came to be. Everybody's always surprised, like how do you build a store with volunteers? And really it comes down to collaboration. Everybody in this room has every ability to reach whatever goal you want as long as you work with each other because, you know, many hands make light work and nothing can be truer than what we have achieved at Good Neighbor. What we're trying to do is provide basic needs to people that they cannot get currently. We are barrier free, we don't ask for your income, your demographics, and we provide clothing, food, and references to shelter when available. It's really trying to solve the problem of connecting people who don't have anything with those who do. And of our customers, you may be surprised to find that 50% of our customers are actually seniors on fixed incomes who live in uh, nonprofit housing, 30% are unhoused or indigenous, and 20% are working poor like my family. We didn't get to shop at the uh, stores when we were growing up, and I didn't want kids to have to go through that experience now, 20 years, 30 years later. And something that we learned was that perfection is the enemy of progress. Like if we tried to make it perfect and solve every problem, we would never be around for as long as we have. It's now been two years, the fridge was around for three, and we did it together as a team, like all these people are volunteers who believed in our mission. It's something that I could never have dreamed of. And now what are we doing is we're creating spaces to meet. So for the past two summers, we've been activating the historic fire hall downtown, allowing nonprofits and community groups to have space to gather and to build the community that they want, much like you're doing today by coming to this event. It's been an incredible learning experience and I am so excited to continue to create experiences for people that are low cost and accessible regardless of who you are, where you came from, and to create those core memories for kids. The things that I wanted so much as a child, to be able to go to the camps, to go to the events and have fun with my family even if they couldn't afford it. And so, what is next for us? We're really working on advocacy, talking about affordable housing as much as we can. We're working on more innovative pilots and we're working with whoever has an idea, you know? We brainstorm together, we find the space and we pivot and we create and it's a beautiful thing, kind of like baking, you know? All working together. And what can you do? As people sitting in this audience today, you're obviously interested in what goes on in our city. We need people to use their voices to go out and meet your neighbors as much as possible and to advocate for a better standard of living for all of us because regardless of where you came from and what your story is we deserve a basic right to housing and a dignified life that's all thank you thank you thank you alice